Was 2020 your year to apply to PA school? You were so ready. You had everything dialed in. You had everything jotted down exactly step by step, your timeline, what you wanted to do when it came time to apply this April. CASPA opens April 30th. And then what happens? COVID-19. Then you start getting emails like this. We regret to inform you that we can no longer accept you as a shadow. What's up with that? If COVID-19 has put a roadblock in your application cycle, I'm here to help you out and give you some insight on what you can do to power through. I'm Anthony Gothier for Your Journey to PA School, and every week I provide insight and videos on how you can become a top applicant on applying to PA school. In this week's video, I talk about how COVID-19 has been putting a roadblock on people applying to PA school this cycle. Now the first thing that comes to mind is, is CASPA still going to accept you during the application process or are they going to start doing anything different? Well, recently CASPA updated their website informing future applicants that the application is going to open on April 30th as planned. If there's any concerns or issues, they advise you to follow their frequently asked questions section or to contact the PA schools directly. Knowing that CASPA is still going to open up on April 30th should keep you motivated to get ready to apply to PA school. The next thing that you need to think about is my prerequisites now going from in-person classroom with an in-person lab to be in an online course. PA programs require in-person lab especially for those core prereq science. What am I supposed to do now? The consensus is not fully out yet, but some programs are going to accept online science courses as well as an online lab. Preferably, they really want you to be in-person lab, especially for things like chemistry, biology, and anatomy. But each program is gonna be a case-by-case -case basis. It's really important for you to reach out to the programs individually if you are in this situation where your in-person class with the lab has now transitioned to online. Hopefully the PA school that you're applying to will take this into consideration, maybe grant you a waiver or maybe allow you to complete the in-person lab at a later date prior to matriculation into the PA program. Let's get to the real situation. You had worked so hard to get that shadowing opportunity. You finally had a PA agree to accept you as a shadow. And then what happens? You're no longer allowed to shadow. Well guys, it is definitely a health and safety concern and it's for your best that you are not involved in the healthcare field as a shadow, as an observer, when putting you at risk to catch this disease is paramount. Don't think anything negative about losing your shadowing situation. It's for your health, it's for your safety, and just keep your contacts in mind. Best thing you can do is to stay in touch, keep emailing or reaching out to the contact that agreed to let you shadow and see if you can postpone the shadowing to a later date. Hopefully in the near future, summertime, things will blow over and you'll be able to return to shadow that PA. So don't lose hope yet. What about those of you that had a medical mission set up to go to another country? Now what happens with that? Hopefully you'll be able to get your money back if you did have to pay to set up this medical mission to attend. Be understanding to the situation that's going on throughout the world that you know that opportunity is just something that you're probably not gonna be able to do in the near future. Maybe later on in the late summer, early fall, you'll be able to do it. But for right now, just stay focused on looking for volunteer opportunities that are closer to home. I know for all of you out there that are working in healthcare, maybe you're working as a scribe or have some other entry level healthcare job and you're no longer able to perform your duties because the risk of you contracting COVID and your contact with potential positive patients puts you at harm's risk. So I've gotten a lot of emails and feedback from people that are working as scribes and can no longer work. They can no longer be in certain situations in the ER because of the risk of contacting or being in contact with someone that tests positive for COVID-19. Now, 
Hopefully you've been working for a long period of time and you've been able to bank those healthcare hours. But if that's not the case, because maybe this summer you're really hoping to bank all your healthcare experience hours, those patient hands-on hours, and now it looks like it's going out the door, really consider your options when applying to PA school. Not every PA school requires hands-on patient care hours. So make sure you're diligent while searching through the PA programs you're interested in applying to, to make sure that those that you want to apply to, if you're in this situation and you no longer have the opportunity to accrue hours, that you can apply to programs that aren't as heavily weighing the importance of direct patient care experience. There are some out there, so make sure you search and make sure you're really diligent when applying to PA schools that you know how many hours they require, if any. The dreaded GRE. You work so hard to study, you had that date, you're a nervous wreck, but you're really excited to pull the trigger and just be done with the exam, and now you get that email stating that they had to postpone your exam. Don't worry. Use this as a time for you to study more, keep focusing 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, study a little bit for the GRE, they'll postpone you hopefully for a few weeks. Make sure that you're fully prepared and ready to rock that exam. Now what about the PA CAT? The PA CAT is very similar to the MCAT for medical school, but it's specific to PA school. Now some programs are requiring it. There's no excellent resource to help you prepare and study for the PA CAT. The PA CAT's website does have practice exams for you to review basically some practice questions and they have their blueprint of the exam listed so you know what topics they're testing on. Make sure you check out their blueprint. I'll link it in the description so that way you have a better chance to prepare for that exam. Your letters of rec. You're hoping to be able to ask for a letter of rec early, but with all the madness of the COVID-19, the professors, the clinicians, the PAs, the doctors, everyone you are hoping to ask for a letter of rec, they're all working hard, specifically focused on this disease. They don't have time to write you a letter of recommendation. Don't let that get you down. What you can do is you can make sure that you stay in contact with them through email and keep them in mind so that once things die down and calm down, you can reach out to them to write you your letter of recommendation. If they've known you well enough and feel confident to write you a letter of recommendation, having this gap of a few weeks to a couple months shouldn't deter them from not wanting to write your letter of recommendation. Stay in constant contact with them They'll really appreciate the updated information through those emails when it becomes time to write your letter of recommendation. Which leads me to writing your personal statement. This is the ideal time for you to work on your personal statement so you can rock it, so it can be a stellar personal statement. There is no excuse whatsoever that you don't have an awesome personal statement. You have plenty of time to brainstorm, research, work your ideas out, make that rough draft, and keep working on your draft until you get that final polished draft. Something you'll be proud of, something you know will get those PA program admissions officers knocking down on your door. Well, you know, really, they're gonna send you an email to get you in for an interview. Applying to PA school is no easy task in itself, let alone this obstacle that's hitting the world right now. Keep in mind, you need to use your time wisely, take few moments each day to focus and really work towards your goal of becoming a PA. PA programs may extend their deadlines depending on how situations pan out or when it becomes time to interview for these PA programs, they might have virtual interviews. Keep those things in mind, but keep working hard and I can't wait to the day to call you a fellow PA. If you like this video, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. Each week I'll give you new videos informing you of insight, tips, recommendations, and ways to make you stand out from the crowd while applying to PA school. I'm Anthony Gothier for your journey to PA school, and remember, I can't wait till the day to call you a fellow PA.